Chapter 18. Faking it. Who are you? Are you a winner? Are you a loser? After reading this far in the book, do you know who you are? Are you a strong, powerful, positive thinking, motivated, self-starter? Or are you an average person who wants to improve your life? Are you the person you think you are? Are you the person everybody else thinks you are? Are you the person you always dreamed you could be? Or are you really faking it? There is a common virus persistent in our human fam Eilie. It is the virus of doubt. It whispers in your ear, suggesting you are not as successful or as powerful or as loving as you want to be. Or that you are lying to yourself and to others about who you really are. At times, we all feel like we're only pretending. That we are not really the person we want to be. That we are letting ourselves or somebody else down that we are not living up to our I am age or potential. And I am here to tell you that these things are simply not possible. You are who you are. You are a valued member of the human family. You are one of the nearly 6 billion men and women on this planet. You were put here for a reason, and the rest of us need you. Even if some of us forget sometimes, we still need you. We need you as much as your heart needs your lungs, or as your electrons need your protons. You are part of the single universal soul of this planet, and we need you. God loves you. And if you simply ask, the Great Spirit will send you all the help you need at any time and under any circumstances. Not believing in yourself is a form of fear. And fear must go so that your good can flourish. Think about the times you felt pressured or upset while you were working. How many of these instances relate to your fears? Are you afraid you will displease someone? Are you afraid that you will not measure up to the job? Are you afraid you will get criticized, yelled at or fired? Are you afraid you will let your team down? Cost the company or yourself money? Or perhaps show everyone you are not the person they think you are? Are you afraid you are not the person you think you are? This is absolutely not possible. You are a unique and select individual. You are a SPE-cific combination of molecules, electrons, protons and energy which is not duplicated anywhere on the face of this Earth or any other planet in the cosmos. You are unique. There is nobody like you. The law of probability determines your singularity. It is not even remotely possible for you to have a duplicate. Identical twins are not truly identical. And even if some mad scientist should someday find a way to clone you, you and your clone would, from the instant of his or her creation, be different. You would have different perspectives, different experiences and different desires dictated by the fact that you each have separate and distinct lives. You are like no one else. You can only be you. The thoughts and desires you have belong to you. If you think you can heal people, you can. If you think you can win the lotto, you can. If you think you can meet and marry the person of your dreams, you can. If you think you can grow rich beyond your wildest dreams, you can. You can do it, because you possess the thought. This is a very important concept. Remember it. The thought of a unique individual by definition is unique to that individual UAL. And the potency of that thought is inherent in having the thought. More simply, whatever you think, you can. In fact, you would not have the thought if you did not have the CA capacity to achieve it. If you can think it, you can have it. You are designed by nature to be self-fulfilling. Every aspect of your creation is propelling you toward achieving the very thoughts you often think are beyond your grasp. You are designed to fulfill a purpose, and your mind knows it. Trust yourself. Believe in yourself. Do the best you can. Ignore those who would make you doubt yourself. Bless them for they are filled with negativity and cannot follow you. They question your ability because they are not sure of their own. Cause and effect. Everything you put out comes back multiplied. Sure, you may have to learn a lot to get where you are going, but you are destined to get there, which means you are entirely capable of learning the lessons. You may fail to achieve ends that were not for you to achieve, but those very failures propel you toward your true self. Can you guide a large rock stuck in the mud? No. 
Imagine that same large rock rolling down a hill. Now can you guide it? You can push it one way or the other. You can decide right or left while gravity does the rest. This is one of the secrets to your success. Can the forces of the universe guide you if you are standing still or stuck in the mud of fear and indecision? No way. You must be moving before the universe can guide and direct you toward your desired end. Remember. Nature guides a rolling stone. Imagine that the person with whom you are the closest is hurt and needs your help. This person is trapped in an abandoned mine several miles from the road, across a desert canyon filled with rattlesnakes, scorpions, cactus and all manner of deadly peril. It is 130 degrees outside, and you must leave now to save your friend before he or she dies from loss of blood. You have no choice. You must go. Imagine also, that because it is your destiny to save your friend, the universe will guide you through this valet. Even though you are careful, how do you know where the sleeping rattlesnakes lie? You don't. But the universe does. Perhaps you scratch your leg on a cactus and as a reaction you move more to the left and there you see a wider path, which you follow. By doing this, the universe has steered you away from a rattlesnake, a danger far greater than the cactus. You can be guided once you begin your journey. This is the way of the world. We take action. The universe guides us. Do something even if it's wrong, a friend from Texas used to say. By the time he was 30 he had over a million dollars in the bank and was married to one of the sweetest ladies I had ever met. He started with nothing except desire. He was determined to be rich, and he followed the universal laws. He sold real estate as an agent until he decided that he could make more money buying and selling houses. At that point he returned his real estate agent's license to the state. He felt it was morally wrong for him to negotiate to buy houses from people without declaring his license. So he chose to go through a period of time without a cash flow, without monthly income. It was hard, but he made it. And he tithed on the money he made. From then on, he was the Teflon investor. No matter what trouble beset those around him, he came out of it clean as a whistle and richer than ever. He knew that he was destined to be wealthy because he believed God had created him with that potential. He followed the universal laws, and he trusted in his own feelings. The deals came to him. He was prosperous. He was happy. He was simply himself. Forget the garbage you have learned your whole life. Forget that you are supposed to struggle and work at a job you do not love or that you must work like a slave. Forget that you have to prove yourself or live up to other people's expectations. Trust in the universe to guide you. Know that you are the one and only you. Know that you are who you think you are and you can do whatever you think you can do. Know that your thoughts are not only important to you. They are important to the rest of us. Write them down and make it so. We need you to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 19. When the rain sets in. Picture yourself in a verdant garden. Everywhere you look there are beautiful and exotic flowers. Luscious fruit of every variety hanging ripe on the trees. Scores of Vegeta bless, plump, juicy and delicious, all within arm's reach. Picture yourself in a garden filled with everything you ever desired. Blue sky up above and birds chirping in the warm sun. This is heaven on earth and you can have it for the asking. Whatever you want you can have. Just remember one thing. This is still the planet Earth, and sooner or later the rain sets in. The skies will darken as clouds cover the sun. Lightning and thunder will quiet the birds, and for a while it may seem as though the sky is falling. It may seem as though all your rich dreams are about to come crashing down around you. You may even feel like you are making a huge mistake, that everything you've learned here is wrong and leading you down the path of destruction. The truth, however, is something else entirely. The truth is, you're in for nothing more than a little wet weather. Imagine that you have written down everything you want. You have visualized yourself enjoying these things. You have gotten enthusiastic about actually having these things in your life. You have detached yourself from caring about ever having them. 
You tithe on a regular basis. You give freely of yourself to others. You have freed your mind of negative thinking. Love is your favorite color. And now despite all this, just when everything looked so promising, all the trouble you could possibly imagine comes knocking on your door. Why? We live in a world governed by natural laws. The foremost of which is cause and effect. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Growth is organic. Growth requires change. If you ask to grow big and strong, don't be surprised when the rain sets in. The process of change that must first occur before you can have the prosperity you desire is called chemicalization. It is the stirring of the pot that makes the soup. It is an actual chemical change. Chemical change is necessary for creation. Water, for example, is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. Separately, they are two gases, together they make a liquid. All of creation, including you and me, is made of chemicals. If you are not rich now and you want to be rich, then you must undergo a chemical change. By definition you want to be different than you are now. The things around you must also undergo a chemical change. This is as basic as life itself. We call this process chemicalization. Sometimes this means that the situation you are in will change dramatically. Your business will take a sudden, unexpected drop. Old friends will leave and relocate somewhere else. The one you thought would be your partner for life falls in love with a fishing boat and sails into the sunset. Things change. Change us, after all, the only constant in this life. Whether you know it or not, your written list of preferences is an order for change. An order that has a potency as absolute as any seed planted in the ground. But before your order can grow tall and strong, it needs rain and fertilizer. That means you may get wet and you may even step in something nasty. Chemicalization is merely a restructuring of your situation. It does not mean the other shoe has fallen and that you are bound to fail. It does not mean that you are being punished for your sins. Or that any number of negative thoughts have any validity whatsoever. This is nonsense. It is always darkest before the dawn. Chemicalization simply means your plans are working. That your gold is being washed from the dirt. That your crops are growing and the harvest is assured. Remember, all of your good comes from God. He will never throw you to the wolves. He is rearranging your life to make room for the things you have requested. There must be a winter before there can be a spring. You have redefined yourself. You have spun a cocoon by asking to be rich, and now you are changing into someone you always knew you could be. You should expect a hard rain now and then. It is all part of the process of cause and effect that underlies all life on this planet. Not long after I started using this system I learned about chemicalization, up close and personal. I was selling advertising for a technical website. Sales were booming. Every month I sold more ads for more money than ever before. My relationship with the client got better and better. I was the fair-haired hero. I could do no wrong. I decided to put this system of creating wealth to work in a big way. I wrote down the parameters of a huge SUC successful business. I spent my savings on new equipment, and I added the monthly expense of a new salesman. My ship was coming in, and I wanted to be prepared. My expenses grew to an all-time high, yet I figured I would probably retire within a year. The website owner started talking about going public. I was in high cotton when the rain set in. One night in June the server crashed and we lost all our data. The backup failed, and we could not restore a thing. A website is nothing but zeros and 1s. It is digital information stored electronically. It had taken our programmers and developers a year and a half to create this modern day marvel, and in a couple of nanoseconds, the whole thing was a memory. It was less than a puff of smoke. Well, it does not take a genius to know you cannot sell much advertising on a non-existent website. I worked harder than I had ever worked in my life just to stay alive. My survival and the very survival of the website was dependent upon keeping the sponsors paying. 
This was not easy. Every day I came to work and faced a growing discontent among those who had paid for advertising that they were not get tamed. This lasted for nearly two months. At that time I could not have told you one good thing that was happening to me. Marilyn told me it was chemicalization. She told me not to worry. She said I should write down more things I wanted to have. Give me a break. The water was up to my neck. What I needed was a big boat. Maybe an ark like Noah had. What I failed to realize at the time was that my 79 cent spiral notebook was my big boat. Because of the chemicalization on our website, we rebuilt bigger and stronger than ever. We threw out old technology and rebuilt with new, innovative techniques. Since we were not burdened by some of the old cumbersome methods, we created a whole new site which was faster and more effective than ever. In fact, because of the chemicalization, we were forced to create a website that was actually capable of meeting my aggressive new goals for growth. The old site would never have allowed us to grow as fast or as big. Our sales skyrocketed, and by the end of the year we had surpassed my own projections. All this because the rain set in. Change, however, comes from two sources. In addition to chemicalization, we must also deal with Mr. Negative. Mr. Negative is fear. Our own fear that we are not who we believe we are. That we do not deserve the good we have asked for. Mr. Negative wants us to fail. He wants us to quit. He wants us back in leg irons, enslaved by the tedium of yesterday's reality. He wants us to work long, hard hours, to scrimp and save and struggle to pay our bills. He wants us to lose track of the prize we have set for ourselves. To stop planning for success and accept defeat. Fortunately, Mr. Negative is weak. He works hard, very hard, but he is not nearly as strong as your positive side. He can get you to make mistakes. He can make you question your own good. He can sometimes convince you that everything you believe is a lie. He is full of logic and reason, hate and anger, jealousy and rage. He is everything negative and desperate, but he is weak. If you bring a lamp into a dark room, you get light. If you bring a bucket of darkness into a lighted room you still have light. Mr. Negative is doomed to lose. He will lose, because you have an invincible protector waiting to carry you safely through any attack. You have an impregnable stronghold waiting to ensure your victory. You have the force. You have the unlimited power of the universe at your fingertips. The secret to dealing with chemicalization or Mr. Negative is to keep your cool. Take a deep breath and say out loud, this, too, shall pass. Relax and trust that the universe has your best interest at heart. No matter how bad it gets or how much it hurts or how dark things look, you must trust in your own inevitable success. A success guar antied by the prime mover himself. These hiccups are merely the ups and downs of life cycle. Whatever you do, do not quit. Do not give up on yourself or on this system of wealth and happiness. Do not give in to the dark side. Mr. Negative only goes to work because you are ready for a big increase. He is afraid you are going to leave him behind. He is fighting for his existence. And there is an easy way to let him slip into the void where he belongs. When the going gets tough, ask for more stuff. Grab your 79 cent notebook and write down more things you would like to have. Marilyn is right. Asking for more good will remind you that you live in a diamond mine not a mere hole in the ground. Focus on the good you have. Focus on the good you want to have. Stormy weather is merely a confirmation that you are set to grow even richer. Picture having everything you have asked for. Imagine the fun of driving your new car, living in your new house, cooking dinner with your new mate. Get excited about having the things you have asked for. The universe wants you to succeed. In fact, your success is already fixed like one of the stars in the night sky. Even when you cannot see it, you know it is there. If the rain sets in and you need to talk to someone, talk to us. From time to time everybody needs help with this system. We sure did. Visit our website. www.richdreams.com is our home online.
There you'll find our love and our email address. Please come see us. We want to know you. You are one of those lucky people who are rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 20. The Help Button. We live in a computer age. Every day we become more and more dependent upon computers. Personally, we write letters on the computer, then send them via email over the internet. We can read our morning news online. We can buy flowers, order books and invest in stocks with the click of a mouse. All this, however, is possible because of one fee to ray in all computer programs. This one feature allows us to learn how to use our computers without doing any say Raya's physical damage when the frustration builds. When you do not know what to do, you can always click the help button. Using this system for getting rich, you undoubtedly will find times when you simply do not know what to do. You may feel overwhelmed, frustrated, beaten, discouraged, angry, picked on, deserted, envious, depressed, despondent, attacked. Dot. Dot dot. You may lose your perspective. You may start listening to Mr. Negative, who can be a very persuasive little stinker. You may find yourself in the middle of a period of chemicalization and just plain lose it. When this happens, when you feel like you need help, use the help button. Write a letter to God. This is your ever-present help button. It is guaranteed to work 100% of the time. When things are not going well, when you have no idea how to solve a problem, when your boss or your mate becomes irrational, when you are buried under a mountain of bills, write a letter to God, the power of creation, the good force of the universe. This is your greatest friend. This is your sustainer. This is the one who gives you everything. Who wants you to succeed? Of course, this universal omnipotent force will help you. Keep your letter simple and to the point. Explain the situation as you see it and ask for help. Then thank your benefactor in advance for taking care of your problem. I always write to God. You could as easily write Dear Universe. Here is a sample letter if you need one. Dear God. I need your help. I feel pressured by my boss to work longer hours without extra pay. I don't think that's right. I have a family and he doesn't. I want to go to soccer games with the kids and have an occasional date with my wife, but I have bills to pay. I can't afford to lose my job. What am I supposed to do? Please make it very clear to me beyond a shadow of a doubt what I am to do. Thank you in advance for your help. The help button. Remember to sign the letter and then put it in a safe place. Or tear it up and throw it away. Some people like to destroy their letters to God after they write them. I do not. But then I still have papers I wrote in the late 60s in a box somewhere. You can tear up the letter. You can burn it. You can drown it in water. You can wad it into a little ball and shoot baskets with it. It does not matter. This is between you and the power of creation. No one else need be involved. The universe got the message. Help is on the way. Keep in mind that you are writing this letter to your best and dearest friend. Pour your heart out. Say anything and everything that comes to your mind. When I first started doing this I was very frustrated and angry about a particular situation. So I blamed the universe. I wrote that I felt that God really let me down. I asked for guidance and direction. I wanted to know what I was supposed to do. I detailed the problems I was having and signed off. Well, I felt better right away. Immediately, I felt relieved of my burden. I had expressed my true and honest feelings, and my best friend had listened and helped. I don't recommend you make a habit of blaming your tests and difficult ties on God. These are your tests. I'm only pointing out the power and the freedom you have when asking for his help. The universe knows your situation better than you do. The supreme power of the universe made you rich, and that same power will come to your aid when you ask. The point is you can be yourself. Be honest. Express your feelings. God can take it. Oh, it goes without saying that once you write your let tear, you must detach yourself. If you ask for help, 
You have given up control. Sure, you want the problem solved, but if the solution does not fit your preset notion of how things should go, so be it. The creative forces of the universe manage to work out gravity, sunlight, oxygen. All those things that keep us alive. They can handle your problems. Right and detach. One couple I know live on the East Coast in a rented house. They have a fledging chocolate business in their home. Great chocolate. Well, she called me one Saturday morning to say that her landlord had just given them no ties to move. They wanted the house back. She was torn apart because she had planned to stay in this house and eventually buy it. Besides, they had moved so many times, they were tired of it. She wanted to know what she could say to God to get this all straightened out so she could stay there. Well, I suggested she write a letter to God and give him the problem. In the end they found a new house, which is bigger and has everything they need for their chocolate business. Remodeling the old house would have cost them $25,000 out of their own pocket. In the new house it was already done. The universe knew their situation better than they did. Recently, Marilyn's landlords decided to get serious about selling the house she had lived in for years. Actually, Marilyn and the couple who owned the house were good friends, so Marilyn agreed to stay while the house was being shown. She liked the house and didn't really want to move. In fact, the house had been for sale for several years with no takers. So Marilyn figured that the universe would make it crystal clear when it was time for her to move. The landlords made sure the real estate agency who listed the house knew Marilyn was a friend. The agency promised Marilyn they would call 24 hours ahead of time. They also promised to follow Marilyn's one request that everyone remove their shoes at the front door. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. The listing agent would show up without calling. Act to ally he was doing what real estate people do. He was selling the house and he had to show it when the opportunity arose. Of course, these people paraded through the house without taking off their shoes, constantly interrupting Marilyn's work. The intrusion became overwhelming. Marilyn felt like maybe it was time for her to go, so she went into her bedroom and wrote a letter to God. Dear God. I can't do my work with this house thing going on. If I'm supposed to move, please take care of it. Fix it. And I want white carpet in the new house. Thanks. Marilyn. About 10 minutes after writing the letter, one of Mari Lynn's clients called to thank her for the help Marilyn had given her. That client was also a real estate broker. Marilyn told her about the difficulty she was having and the broker said, You know, I just took a listing on a rental this morning. It has a fantastic view of the ocean, but it does have one drawback. White carpet. Within 24 hours, Marilyn had seen and signed a lease on that very property. Naturally, the old landlords were a bit shocked by the swiftness of her move. Marilyn was out within two weeks. She has a newer house with an incredible view of the Pacific Ocean all because she gave her problem to God. Oh, the old house sold to that last prospect, and the new owner was thrilled to take Posse's scion immediately. Things resolved with good for all concerned. No matter how difficult things are. No matter how overwhelming the situation may seem. You always have a place to turn. Use the help button and write a letter to God. It's fast. It's free. It's one of the many gifts the universe has given you to ensure that you can grow rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 21. What you are learning here is powerful information. This is the same information Moses, Christ, Baha'u'llah, all the divine messengers and potent philosophers of history have set down for our growth and understanding. These are the practical applications of the universal laws of this world. They are at times a mystery, an apparent contradiction of all that we have learned from our parents and teachers, a paradox of this reality. Now, I am not here to prove these laws nor to even recite them all that you can do when you write your book. What I am here to do is to explain how you can use them to get rich beyond your wildest dreams. Follow this path and you will open the door to your own prosperity. You will swim in a sea of wealth and happiness. 
trouble will no longer harass you. Living your life will become a joy you never dreamed possible. How many times have you been told that nothing really changes in this life? That might makes right? That power is as power does? That the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? That bankers rule the world? That what's good for big business is good for you? That it takes money to make money? Oh, and of course the golden rule of the business world, gold rules? Well, forget it. Throw away your old concepts of wealth, because we are entering the age of Aquarius. This is the beginning of a new world order. A world order in which, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. The age of competition is over. Look around. It is dying everywhere. And in its place you will see the beginning of the age of cooperation. Perhaps the place to look first is the great equalizer, the common people's window to the world. That amazing storehouse of information and opportunity which is even now eclipsing television as the dominant medium of the 21st century. Welcome to the World Wide Web. It took radio 33 years before it had 50 million listeners. It took television 13 years to raise 50 million viewers. The internet had 50 million people online less than 5 years from the beginning of commercialization. In the fall of 1997, there were 27 million computers connected to the web. By March of 1998, there were more than 50 million computers logging on, surfing, downloading, researching, investigating, buying, selling, chatting, sharing, communicating openly and freely without prejudice for reasons of gender, race, nationality, sexuality, religion or ethnic background. Every day the internet grows bigger and stronger. Today, hundreds of millions of computers are now online. They are in every continent of the world. E-commerce will soon eclipse even the most exaggerated predictions. If you have not yet experienced the internet, do what millions of people are doing every day. Shut off the TV and log on. Find out for yourself what everyone is talking about. See why nearly every TV commercial has a web address listed. When I was living in Houston many years ago there was a rather arrogant local TV commercial by an oil service company. It ended with the tag, if you don't have an oil well, get one. Then it was arrogant because the Avenue or Ridge person watching that commercial was locked out. Not everyone could get an oil well. It can easily cost mill lions of dollars a day to drill for oil. That's after you own a lease and have the necessary government permission. Today, you can have the equivalent of an oil well for the price of a home computer. Today, fortunes are being made with little more than a home computer, a connection to the internet and a good idea. For years I have relied on a particular man to clean our carpets. He is a good worker and does a great job. I trust him and wanted to help him get more business. So the last time he did our carpets, I asked if he needed a list of my friends to prospect. He declined, said he was cutting back on the carpet cleaning business. He said he was spending more time buying and selling currency on the internet. What? Yes, my carpet cleaner guy has a program that helps him make extra money buying and selling foreign currency on the internet. He said he is really conservative and only makes about $300 a day working an hour or two in the mornings. That's more than $70,000 a year. A lot more than he makes cleaning carpets. Another friend of ours is an attractive woman in her early 40s and the mother of four. She recently divorced her husband of 24 years. They parted as friends, and lately she's been searching for a new love relationship. This lady chats with men from around the world. They discuss all the things people discuss when getting to know each other. She has had dates with men from Louisiana, Canada, Denmark and Australia. She really hit it off with the Australian guy. He came to California to visit her, and she went to visit him and then, zippity doo dah, guess what happened? Wedding bells. Not only did our friend get Marie, she had the big wedding she always wanted but couldn't afford the first time around. They are now happily married and living in Southern California. Romance and the internet are the key words here. Our own website, 
www.richdreams.com initially was designed to support this book and give readers a place to gather with like-minded friends. It, however, has spawned a whole new business for us. We began selling ebooks and occasionally conducting e-seminars through email. This new success is especially sweet for us because we reach people everywhere. One of our first projects was an e-class for business, quantum marketing, unleashing a higher power. Not only did this e-class sell out very quickly and set sales records for this kind of project, but the class members represented every populated continent on Earth. We now have friends in China, Australia, India, United Arab Emirates, Ghana, Germany, Great Britain, Brazil, Argentina, Toronto, most US states. And the list keeps growing. Success stories and the internet are now nearly synony most. If you are not online, you are missing the time of your life. You can visit the Louvre in Paris, watch the pandas playing in the San Diego Zoo or get the latest pictures from the Hubble telescope. You can see the price the dealer pays for your new car before you negotiate. Heck, you can get a couple of price quotes on exactly the car you want without even leaving the house. You can buy a good book or book a good trip. You can buy stocks or stock up on free video games. You can talk to someone when you are lonely. Or you can use your alone time to explore a whole new world. Get online. If you don't have a fast enough computer, buy one. Write it down. I have a new computer. It is fast enough and configured properly for using the internet. I am online. Internet access will soon be a standard, much like the telephone. Besides, if you want to ask us a question about this SYS Tem, you have to come to our website. We have a link there that you can use to reach us. The address of our website is the title of this chapter, www.richdreams.com. Just type that in the address line on your browser, hit enter and in less time than it takes to say, Peter Piper picked a peck of platinum peaches, we can be together again. Hey, the internet isn't everything. It's the only thing. Particularly if you plan on getting rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 22. Claim your wealth. Get excited. Get enthusiastic. Grab your car keys and put on your buying hat. It's time to get out there and claim your wealth. It's time to get the things you want now. Not tomorrow. Not next year. Not someday. Now. It is time to find the house you want. Now. It is time to find the pearl necklace you cannot live without and make it your own. Now. Go directly to your nearest and finest shopping mall. Drive to your favorite car or boat dealer. Spend Sunday going from one open house to the next. You are going to shop your heart out. Because if you want to be rich, you have to claim what you want now. Right now. You are rich, 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 rich. Your benefactor owns the very planet you live on. He has all the money in the universe. And he says you can have anything you want. So go claim it. Claim your wealth, and it will come to you. Imagine that you are sitting with 20 other people in a circle around a table. In the middle of the table is a basket of fruit which the universe has provided for you. Someone across from you picks up the basket and takes out a piece of fruit and hands the basket to the person next to her. As the basket goes around the table everyone takes a piece of fruit before passing the basket on. The basket finally gets to you and there is one piece of fruit left. There are still four people besides you without any fruit. What do you do? Do you, uh, take the last piece of fruit and cut it into five pieces? Or do you, b, Refuse the last piece and pass the basket on. Or do you, C. Take the last piece of fruit and put the basket back in the center of the table for the creative power of the universe to refill? Make a choice before you read on. The basket of fruit represents the bounty of the universe. It is unlimited. This story helps illustrate the importance of trusting that God will provide for you. If you chose, a uh, cutting up the last fruit then you are saying that the last four people should trust you to feed them, not God. If you chose, b, refusing the fruit, 
then you are saying that you are refusing the good the universe has given you. If you chose, see, taking the last piece of fruit and replacing the basket, then you are on the right track. You are trusting in the providing power of the universe. Knowing that all your good comes from the universe and trusting that it will come are two different things. Knowing is a conscious thought. Trusting is an emotional understanding, and it is much more powerful. Claiming the things you want and then watching them be delivered strengthens your trust. Trust that God will always refill your basket and you create a powerful and compelling enthusiasm for receiving. Combine this heartfelt confidence for receiving with a specific tangible request, your claim. Then you have magnified your ability to get what you want when you want it. Claim what you want and the universe delivers. Claiming specific items as your own creates an invisible bond between you and the items you have requested. Remember wealth is your birthright. The universe has always intended for you to be rich. You were born rich. Part of your wealth is the God-given power to request. To ask that it may be given unto you. Claiming invokes this power. It establishes precisely what you are requesting without the possibility of error. You may ask for a blue sweater, but that is still a vague and ambiguous request. Yes, a blue sweater is not a green shoe, but there are millions of blue sweaters in the world. Claiming makes your request specific, exact. You are saying to the universe that you want this blue sweater, right here. This is what I am asking for. The power and effectiveness of claiming is absolutely amazing. Several years ago Marilyn stopped by a store on her way out of Chicago. There she saw a very large and beautiful polished rose quartz crystal. She wanted it immediately. Today, she calls it her pink rock. She felt like it was hers. But when she asked the price, it was more than she felt comfortable paying. So in her thoughts Marilyn said, Dear God, I want that crystal. If it's mine, please let it wait for me. She headed for California without her pink rock. Two years later, Marilyn returned to Chicago. Again on her way out of town she stopped by that same store. And there in the window was her rose quartz crystal. Marilyn expressed her amazement that such a pretty pink rock would still be there. You know, shortly after you were here the last time that stone disappeared from the store, the owner said. Apparently someone stole it. Then, earlier this month I stepped in the back for a couple minutes and when I returned, your pink rock was lying on the counter. I guess whoever took it brought it back for you. The merchant then reduced the price, saying he probably wouldn't be able to sell it to anyone else anyway. When Marilyn claimed that pink rock she established a powerful and invisible bond with that specific rose quartz crystal. It was hers. She knew it. The store owner knew it. And obviously the universe knew it. Claim your wealth, and it will come to you.